Autumn Bailey. One of my absolute favorite things to read is when the author does something really interesting with the story structure. I'm a massive sucker for this. I love an atypical structure of almost any sort. It always delights me. Anything from minor points of interest to massive changes in typical structure. I love it all. It's my absolute favorite. I would say most of my favorite books do something different with the story structure. Maybe all of them. Even if it's just a little thing. I thought I'd grab a stack of books that I love that play with story structure and pitch them. I have six books and one author I'm going to talk about in depth and then I have a couple of honorable mentions towards the end. I know it would make sense to do them at the beginning, but you're most likely to watch at the beginning, so I'm gonna put the most interesting information at the beginning and just kind of my, oh, these are also interesting at the end as well. And I've also pulled some books off my TBR that I've heard have interesting story structures, just as a little what I'm planning on reading as someone who loves interesting story structure. I'm gonna start with three pieces of adult fiction there all wonderful. They all play with story structure. I'm just gonna jump into the first one. Infinite Country by Patricia Ingle is the most recent book I've read out of this list and it is wonderful. This book is quite short so I don't want to say too much about it and spoil it, but you are following two generations of one family. Half of them are in Colombia and half of them are in the U.S. This book is about migration and identity and belonging. It's truly just excellent. It's one of my favorite books I've read this year, which I will be saying three times in this video. I apologize. But this book definitely does some fun stuff with the structure. I'd give it like a moderate level of story structure messing with. I think it's done incredibly well, especially with the way this book introduces characters. That might have been very vague. I recommend this to anyone who's looking for an interestingly structured book. Obviously, that's this whole video, but specifically if you want stories about family, migration, and identity, run, don't walk to this book. My next book also does talk about migration, though different context. This book is about forced migration in that it does follow the legacy of chattel slavery in the U.S. This is Homegoing by Ya Jesse. This book is probably the one I will credit with why I love books with interesting story structures. I read this a little bit after it came out. The author came to my university and did a book signing. I was incredibly awkward but incredibly delighted. She was lovely. Ever since I read this, I have sought out books with interesting story structures. This book starts out with a pair of short stories from two half-sisters. One has recently married a white Dutch man involved in the slave trade in Ghana, and the other of whom has recently been sold into the slave trade. From there, we follow each sister's descendants until modern day, I think about 2015. I would also recommend this to anybody who wants a story about family and belonging and where you're from being important and where you have gone. This book is incredibly well written. This is Jessie's first novel and it's just amazing. I also really like her second book, but it didn't really fit the video, but I just adore this book. It was in like my top three of the year I read it. So good. Might have been my favorite. I can't actually remember. But it's definitely the one that's had the biggest impact. My last piece of adult fiction is Little Blue Encyclopedia for Vivian by Hazel Jane Plant. This book is definitely on the weird side of story structure. After the first few pages, the rest of the book is set up like an encyclopedia. This book follows our main character, who is a trans lesbian, whose best friend has recently died. The protagonist was very clearly in love with her straight best friend and this book is her processing her grief over the death of her friend through writing an encyclopedia about her memories of Vivian, but also about this fictional television show called Little Blue that the two watched together. This book is weird and wonderful and will make you cry, and I highlighted probably a fourth of this book. It's just amazing. It's also quite short, and I cannot recommend this book highly enough. I read this book this year. It's definitely one of my favorites, as is the next book on this list, but oh, 
I love this book. Switching genres, but staying with books I read this year, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This book is Afrofuturism. It's kind of science fiction that feels like it's fantasy at some times. It, it definitely, in the beginning of the, this book, you firmly feel like you're in a fantasy. And then as time goes on, you get more of the Afrofuturism and science fiction-y elements. In this book, you follow three women, all of whom have the magic that of this world. It's called being an origin. It's magic that interacts with the earth. Origins are persecuted in the society, so you go through the book watching them interact with their society, but also they are dealing with the end of the world. So that's fun. About halfway through this book you start to realize what exactly the structure is leading you towards, and it's just one of, if not the most satisfying reading experiences I've ever had. I was blown away by so much about this book, but specifically the structure. I did not shut up about how impressed I was by this structure for weeks. Anyone who knows me in real life, I apologize. I was just incredibly taken by this book. I loved the rest of the series. I think I give them all five stars, but there was something so special about not knowing what was happening and then figuring it out oh, it was just so great. This book also has strong themes of family and belonging while bringing lots of political and social critique. I could not recommend the fifth season highly enough, especially to science fiction fantasy people, though I'm sure lots of science fiction and fantasy people already either have read this or know that they should. My last adult book is also fantasy. It is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. The Night Circus, Erin Morgenstern's first book, does also play with structure a little bit, but not quite to the extent that The Starless Sea does. This book definitely uses the story within a story, kind of within a story, within a story, within a story, to play with the structure. It is truly just wonderful. I adore the way this book told the story. It's just excellent. This book follows Zachary Ezra Rollins, who is getting his graduate degree in something to do with video games or digital media of some sort. When he was a child, he found a door into another world. He chose not to go through it, and ever since then, he has been kind of searching for this door again. This book is about stories and why we tell stories, and why we love stories, and that is kind of always my very favorite thing. The only YA I have on this list is science fiction. It is Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This book is about two teenagers who break up, and then later that day their planet is invaded by an evil corporation, and they must flee for their lives and also compile the evidence to submit to basically the International Criminal Court to get this evil corporation their comeuppance. The interesting structural element of this book is that it's a dossier. It's kind of bulky, but as you go through the book, the pages all look very different. You have Wikipedia articles and transcripts and emails and chat logs, and it's just a really fun book to read. It is a trilogy. All three books are very similarly structured. They all follow different primary characters, but doing the same overarching narrative. My last recommendation is an author more than a book. It is Brian Selznick's work. They're very heavy. I'm going to put them down and talk about them one at a time. His most famous work is The Invention of Hugo Cabret. They have a movie called Hugo. I haven't seen it. I don't know how good it is. Um, it looks cute. It's probably great. I just haven't seen it. All of Selznick's work is part picture and part text. Typically not the pictures being an illustration of text. Typically the pictures are part of the story that supplement the text. This book largely takes place in a train station. It uses the pictures and the text together to tell one story, not an illustrated story. I hope that makes sense. His next book is Wonderstruck. This book's structural element is a little bit more dynamic than The Invention of Hugo Hebrae. You are being told one story in pictures and one story in text, and as the book goes on you figure out how those stories are tied together. And then the last of the three, they're not a trilogy, they just all have matching spines, is The Marvels. 
This book is told the first half completely in pictures and the second half completely in text. It is about theater and pirates or sailors of some sort. The fun of this book is very much going through the visual story you get in the first half of the book and then tying that in as you read the text. It is a really wonderful experience as all of Brian Selznick's books are. Here are some other books with fun story structure elements. Um, most of them are not quite as prominent. The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner is an amazing like YA science fiction fantasy romance. Its interesting structural element is more of a genre element so I didn't quite think it counted but I adore this book. It is a goddess from a fantasy world intersecting with a prince from a science fiction world and they kind of have to figure out if their world is actually science fiction or fantasy is essentially the conflict of this book. It is so good. It's so cute. If you love SSF romance, run to the other side of the sky. They can't touch. It's very tense and ugh. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I don't know why I'm holding these books all weird. This book is about a teenage boy who runs away and ends up involved in like an underground, underwater sort of fantasy conglomeration of children. The element of this book that is different is that it is full of old vintage photographs. The photographs kind of assist the story in a way that isn't directly an interesting structural element, but it is interesting visually. I probably should have just outright included The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, but I my very first video is actually about this book. Um, it's so interesting. It's kind of a collection of reviews about various aspects of the human-centered planet, but they're really ways for Green to write a memoir. This is fantastic. One of my favorite books of the year. Five stars. I love it. And The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. All of Ruth Ware's books do a fun story structure element. Normally they're not like crazy huge, which is why it's kind of an honorable mention. This book is an epistolary kind of murder mystery where you are trying to figure out both who the murderer is and who the victim is. It's just a fun little structural element. I liked this book. All of Ruth Ware's books have little fun elements like that. Lots of mystery thriller books. Have little elements like that. The Guest List by Lucy Foley has a cute little structural element. And then books from my TBR! House of Leaves by Mark C. Danielewski and the Night Film by Marcia Pestle are both horror books that kind of have a multimedia-esque experience to them. That's kind of everything I know about both of them is that they are interesting structurally and that they're horror or maybe a thriller. They both seem very interesting and I'm hoping to read both of them soon. I've heard lots of Toni Morrison has interesting structural elements. I think I've heard Sula is one of those. I know one of her short stories is particularly well known for its structure, but I've heard that Sula and Beloved both have really interesting structural elements. Also, I just want to read more Toni Morrison. Basically, all I know about Sharks in the Time of Saviors is that it is a generational story about um, indigenous Hawaiians. I've heard the structure is fun and it's interesting and if I liked Homegoing I should probably read this. So because I do, I will. First 15 Limes of Harry August by Claire North. I've heard this is interesting structurally. I think it's kind of a Groundhog's Day situation. I'll jump in and I'll see. If anyone is watching has a recommendation for a book that is interesting structurally, I would love to hear it clearly. I love this. I would like to read more books like this. If you know anything about the books, I'm planning on reading. I would be happy to hear. If you like any of the books that I've talked about, I would love to hear that as well. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye!